All right, welcome. My name is Ryan O. You've tuned in to the Daily BA. We have Monday through Friday content for behavior analysts by a behavior analyst. And today, instructional design. Specifically though, we're gonna look at component and composite analyses. And so, so much of our field is set up on writing good goals that'll, that'll specifically lay out our learning objectives and what it is that should be measured and watched and taught so where we can make sure that our student has learned exactly what it is that we're trying to reach. And we typically have three ways to go about it. We can either create the program ourselves from scratch, we can go find something that has already been completed and adapted to our learner, or we can go with a prepackaged assessment tool and that helps us narrow down where it is that we need to teach, sometimes coming with a curriculum, sometimes not really coming with a curriculum. And so in any of those three situations, what I have found very, 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 very useful is this idea of a content or a concept analysis. It depends on what it is that you're really teaching. Now, first things first, this came from the instructional design uh, literature line, essentially, and precision teaching, kind of a mix of both. And so what I have here are two books by Markle and Tiemann and Markle, Pinnacles of Instructional Design, really nerdy stuff, not super technical, but just very detailed. This is like if you want to write a curriculum. And they talked about this as well as Mager's Six Pack. Now, Mager's Six Pack was written for more of the business and management sort of folks. And his big thing was like, you have a training issue. It's really not a training issue. It's probably the way in which your stimulator design. These are the roots of where I would say the component composite analysis came from. I will do a separate video just on these. Now, I had mentioned that this also came from the precision teaching line. Now, specifically, Eric Houghton was the first in 1972 to propose this component composite analysis of looking at tool skills. And I'll get into what those are in just a minute. So two good resources, a precision teaching book by Kabina and Yurik, but also response intervention by Johnson and Street. You don't need both of them. Um, they're both a little bit pricey together. This one is by far the most comprehensive in my opinion. This one is very well written as well. Um, just not as much as you can see actually jam packed into it. And so what is this component composite analysis? Well, it has to do with three things. You have tool skills, component skills, and composite skills. And the idea here is that tool skills are your base. They are what is required, your bare minimum to be able to create your component and teach your component skills, which then also roll up into composite skills. So this thing is, if you imagine as this triangle, it can move up and down. It is not a set fixed thing. It is all relative. We're gonna go to the table for an example. All right, here you see table 3.2 from Johnson and Street's 2013 book on precision teaching. And we have on the left side, tool skills, component skills, and composite skills. For our tool skills, we have pinching, holding a pencil, making marks, and writing numbers. For our component skills, you'll see then those roll into holding a pencil and making marks, writing numbers, and then single digit math facts. And then finally, our composite skills, writing numbers, single digit math facts, basic computational algorithms. You'll see in each of these tool component and composite that writing numbers is listed there, showing that it is a very relative term. And so I hope that example helps you out. You can really do it with anything. The way I work on learning how to really apply this concept is working with a lot of people around me. I create something, say, what do you think? We look at it, we analyze it. You can even go to the literature and you can find things that have been walked out. As early as the 70s, we walked out really, really solid lines of what needs to be taught in what orders when it comes to mathematical skills. Now, not everything is actually walked out to that detail, and that is why these resources are very valuable. I'd also say if you're very interested in training at all in any capacity, any sort of behavioral skills training or any sort of or any sort of train the trainer models, that these are going to be good ways to look at how to design your instruction. Now, with that said, some of the problems, it is not fast. You're not going to pick this up and have a solution in five minutes. You might get there at some point, but it's not that quick. The best way I've gone about approaching these sort of things is working in a pair of two. Now, it's two skill sets functionally. A subject matter expert, someone that's really good at the thing that you're trying to teach, and someone that's got this instructional design skill set down. And so I've always worked in those capacities, or you have to learn to be really good at one and then bring it into another, and it's still good to have a mentor in that case. So a time that I've used this, I've worked with a team to create a pre-employment transition services curriculum. It was about 20 hours of instruction and came through some federal changes in the Workplace Innovation and Opportunity Act. And with that said, we created the first version and we continually iterate off of it. So it is something that you need to have that continual improvement mindset with. It's never going to be perfect. You're going to be continually adapting and refining and building off of the curriculum. 
So someone like uh, Johnson and such, the folks that work up at Morningside Academy, they are continually iterating and changing year to year to year, their curriculum, their scopes and sequences, how these tool component composites, and what data are coming in or working and continually adjusting and refining. So, so be ready to put in the work and that is why I suggest having a large team around you to help you out with those sort of things. I'll make sure to link all these. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. Over time, I will jump into these all in more detail. If you like this content, make sure you hit the like button, please. It makes such a big difference. Share whatever it is that you're into. Subscribe if you're not already. And with that said, this is your Daily BA.